is gone for two weeks. Any idea how many voicemail messages I had? I had five. Gone for two weeks, five voicemail messages. Now, a lot of people, I'm guessing, call in and they say, oh, he's going to be really bogged down. I won't bother him. I'll call him when he gets back. But a lot of them dial zero because they know the operator can take care of them. Okay? So I came back to five messages. I also, two of those messages were from um, salespeople that I'd never heard of making cold calls on me, so I deleted those. I had three messages to take care of. When I leave also, I tell Lindsay, my assistant, go through my mail. Anything that looks like junk, throw it out. Anything that, anybody, that you think anyone else can take care of, send it on and have them take care of it. Everybody knows that I, I would like them to take care of it when I'm gone. I came back to a, a pile of mail that was actually smaller than, a to than one day. Came back, you know, a, a typical day for me is like this, okay, of mail. I came back to a stack like this, and that, that's it. That's what my vacation is like today. Now, mm, one of the other things that I came back to that was just, you know, within minutes, I had a huge smile on my face. Because what I got, uh, oh, on the message, the other thing I came back to was, was five messages from customers. Okay, one of them an email telling me how great our people was. Another one was a voicemail. One of the th three voicemails that were left was actually a voicemail from a customer telling me how wonderful we were. And I got three letters, and when I came back, telling me how wonderful our people were. And I had this huge grin on my face. And I'd been back for, you know, a half an hour. And, and it was like, oh my God, this is wonderful. And, and to tell you what else happened, when I was gone, the salespeople decided that they were going to thank the warehouse people while I was gone. So they cooked breakfast for the warehouse people and cooked lunch for the warehouse people while I was gone. Didn't know anything about it. Came back to this message from our warehouse and distribution manager, Doug Havey, telling, um, saying to everybody, thanks so much for the, the wonderful uh, lunch and breakfast. And, and that all happened while I was gone. The place was running better when I came back. Now, remember that who's the boss customer service that I talked about yesterday mor day morning? Everybody wants this great customer service that we, we want to give, but how difficult it is to get it. What's critically important about this, and, the, and again, that customer service where if you can stop 5% of your people from leaving, 5% of your customers from leaving, you can actually increase your revenue or your bottom line by 25 to 95%. One of the speakers had another expert yesterday that actually said that number that you can increase if you stop 5% of them from leaving is actually 25 to 125% increase in profit just by stopping 5% of your customers from leaving. That customer and that other thing that we looked at yesterday that said 82% of people that leave one business do so because of customer service. Well, when I was wanting to make this um, management system. The reason we watched the In Search of Excellence video was because it highlighted Disney and Stu Leonard, and it highlighted their incredible customer service. And I was bound and determined I was going to create that kind of great customer service back in 1982. And again, that's where this frustration came from. Um, and and what, I, what I want to let you know is that the management system itself now actually creates make you happy customer service. And again, by the time we get through the system, you'll understand what I mean by that. Now, the best way for me, well, the only way, because it's <laughs> that I know how to tell you about the system, is to basically give you a, a little bit condensed version of what I actually do with, our, with every new team member of Amer at American Retail Supply. So what I need from you this morning is for you to, to sit there and pretend that you're a new American Retail Supply team member with your first day introduction. Can you all do that for me? You're not a business owners anymore. You're, you're coming in and you're the brand new TMS um, team member. So a couple things that we're not going to cover. I'm not going to cover the intro that I do to the company with everybody. I, I cover where, what our history has been, where we are today, and where, we're, where we think we're going to be tomorrow. 
and, and give, hopefully give them some kind of vision. And I'm not going to cover that. Um, but when I do that, I make sure and cover all of that success when I'm talking about that that we have had to this great customer service that we're trying to get. I'm also not going to be able to cover the values, the vision, the beliefs, and the mission that I cover in that, okay, because we just don't have time for it. And we're not going to have time to watch the Stu Leonard and Disney portions of the DVD that we watch, okay? But we'll cover the rest of it. It's a three-hour meeting, by the way. We'll cover the rest of it and the, uh, the highlights of it for sure anyhow. But those are things that we're not going to cover. So what I want you to do is right now is pretend you're a new American Retail Supply team member and the things that you see on the big screen will be things that you see in front of you for the most part. Some of them I did put up for you also. So we just got done watching the In Search of Excellence video. Let's pretend that we just did that and that uh, we watched Stu Leonard and Dan Disney portions of that DVD, and we saw these incredible examples of customer service. And now the meeting starts, okay? Um, did you notice in that meeting that, uh, well, one thing I want to tell you for, is that we watched that DVD so that you can get an idea of the customer service that we want to do in our business. I, we want to make sure that you understand that we want to have a, a degree of customer service that you probably get nowhere else where you go. That's our goal here at American Retail Supply. Now, I want to make sure, too, that you understand that at the beginning of the DVD, it's hot up here, <laughs> at the beginning of the DVD, Tom Peters talked about looking at these excellent companies. And when he looked at these excellent companies, he found out that in the excellent companies, managers were seeing, can you cue that up for me, please? Well, maybe it's there. There we go. In the excellent companies, managers were seen as coaches, cheerleaders, facilitators, nurturers of champions. And they weren't seen in these excellent companies in these traditional roles. The traditional roles of managers that, that the excellent companies did not have and did not describe their managers was a coach, a devil's advocate, a referee, a pronouncer, a naysayer. Those are what we don't want our managers to be here. What we want our managers to be here are those coaches, the cheerleaders, the facilitators, and the nurturers of champions. And if you don't see that, we want you to raise your hand and tell us that you don't see it. But again, on the other hand, we also expect that we've hired competent people. And we know that you're competent because we interviewed you a lot and, and we hired you because we think you're competent. So I want to make sure that you understand that our our managers should be coaches, cheerleaders, facilitators, and nurturers of champions, but that does not give you an excuse to make mistakes after mistakes. When you make a mistake, though, what we're going to want to do is retrain you. But then we expect you to understand that and continue to, to grow and get better at your job. But it's critical in our business that we want to see that you see our, our managers as coaches, cheerleaders, facilitators of and nurturers of champions. Now, do you remember what Disney, in the, when we go back to the um, um, DVD, what Disney parks were um, their goal? Does anybody remember their goal? You don't, you weren't there. Their goal was to satisfy customers. Is that our goal? Does that sound like a good goal? Yeah. Sounds like a good goal? That's what I do, I didn't, have, I didn't bring my book up. I plop that book on the table and I say, that's not our goal here at all. It's not even close to our goal. This is a book by Jeffrey Gittermer. It's entitled, Customer Satisfaction is Worthless, Customer Loyalty is Priceless. Our goal is not satisfied customers. Our goal is loyal customers. What happens if we have a satisfied customer and our price is a little higher? They're going to go somewhere else. What happens if we have a satisfied customer and someone's a bit more convenient, they're going to go somewhere else. What happens if we have a satisfied customer and we mess up? They're going to go somewhere else, and they're likely going to say something bad about us. That's all the things that happens when we have a satisfied customer. What if we have a loyal customer? That because of our customer service and because they like you, they are loyal. 
What happens if our price is a little higher? They're likely to either tell us or still, if, if nothing, they'll tell us or they'll just keep shopping, okay? What happens if someone's a little bit more convenient but they love dealing with you? What happens? They stay with us. What happens to the, if we have a loyal customer and are the subject of our products or our services come up? If they're loyal, they're going to tell people. They're going to grow our business for us. I don't, and, and you know that in our business, we get more new customers because of referrals from others than any other way. And that's critical for our business. And so what we expect is that we want to have loyal customers, not just satisfied customers. Do you remember in the um, DVD also that Disney, they said Disney was operated on three principles, keep it clean, keep it simple, and give the people a good value. What I want to talk to you about is our three, what we call unique selling propositions. And the unique selling proposition is, why would someone choose us over each and every option that they have? Why do they choose us over all of the other options that they have? And what we think is that we do three things better than anybody else in our industry. And we want to make sure that you understand these three things and that we're always striving to do them. And our unique selling proposition is actually summed up in one sentence. Everything you need to run your store on time, every time, from the people who know only happy clients come back. Now that's one sentence and it covers three things for us is the way that we see it. The first thing that we need to do better than anyone else in our industry is have everything you need to run your store. Now, the people that we sell to can go out and find people in packaging that probably have about as much stuff as we do. But they're not going to have fixtures, and they're not going to have point-of-sale computer systems. They're not going to have credit card processing. They're not going to have marketing systems. They're not going to have signage. There's people that sell fixtures that maybe have as much as we do, but they don't have the packaging. They don't have all of those other things that I just talked about. So what we want to make sure is that we always are the most convenient for our customers because we have more of the things that they need to run their store than anyone else and that they can make one phone call and get everything they need. The second part of our, of our unique selling proposition is on time every time. Now, this really, and again, remember you're my, my new team member, this really has a lot more to do with just delivery, although it, up here in our unique selling proposition, it really kind of just talks about delivery. If we're, gonna give, if we're going to get somebody a custom printed thing and we think it's going to be three weeks, we tell them four weeks, and so we're a hero when it comes in three weeks, and we never, never, never tell them that we think we can do something unless we think we can do it. We never do that with our customers. And what we really mean by this on time every time is that they can rely on anything we say. So those are the first two things that we want to do in our business. We want to have the everything they need to run their store and we want to make sure that all of our customers understand that they can rely on us all the time. The last thing is from people who know only happy clients come back. And that is this whole customer service thing that we're going to continue to talk about this morning. But more important than what you're going to learn just this morning is all of the ongoing things that we do to for make you happy customer service. You're not my employee now for the or my, my new team member now for one set for one sentence. Um, those are all those 55 secrets that continue to be reinforced that you got on your CD yesterday. Okay, so so that's, um, um, so that's the three things we need to do better than anybody else in our industry. We need to have more products for our customers. We need to, they need to know that they can rely on us more than anyone in their, that they can do business with. And they need to know that they're going to get the best customer service from anyone, anywhere, in any business. And that's the three things we need to do in our business. So, yeah, I don't want that screen yet. Okay, <laughs> the, um, and now let's go back to the Disney DVD again. 
And they talked about in Disney of being on stage and off stage. And the people were, and all of the team, the cast members at Disney were on stage when they were up in the park in front of, in front of guests. And they were off stage when they were not in front of guests and, and, and not up in the park. When are we on stage and off stage in our business? On the phone we're on stage, without a doubt. Any, time, any other time we're on stage? Pardon me? In front of the customer. At an event like this, yes. On the internet. Those are when we're on stage. But what's critically important is that in our business, we're always on stage. We're always on stage in our business. We're maybe on stage at a little bit higher level when we're in front of, of customers, but we're always on stage. We're not off stage when we deal with our coworkers. We're on stage when we deal with our coworkers. We're on stage when we deal with our suppliers. We're never off stage. Now, yes, again, we're sugar and spice and everything nice a little bit more with our customers, but we're always on stage. Do you remember that person in the DVD, in the DVD at, at Disney that was handing out the, the costumes? You guys don't, but they, okay. Do you remember that person that was on stage, that was handing out the costumes? My daughter had a friend who'd had that job one summer. She absolutely hated it, because everybody was off stage. She got treated like crap. She hated that job. She went up later in the summer, she got a job up in the park. She loved the job. Everybody was on stage. We're not ever off stage in our business, okay? Let's take a look at the other, another way to look at this. When we're taking an order and we're talking with our customers and we get off the phone and we're finalizing the order and we hit process, who is our customer now? Exactly right. The guy who's gonna pull the order in, in the warehouse. He's our customer now. If we mess up anything, he can't pull it right. Or if we mess up something, he can't pull it effectively and efficiently. And if we're not effective and efficient, we waste money and our prices have to go up to our customers. So the person now who is my customer is the person in the warehouse who's pulling the order. Who's his customer? Yep, the guy in shipping, the guy who has to package it. If he doesn't pull it right, the guy in shipping can't ship it right. Who's the customer for the shipping person? Yep, FedEx in our case. Thank you, FedEx, for being our sponsor. FedEx in our case. By the way, when we went to FedEx, your prices actually went down a bit. Okay, I wanna make sure you understand that. They did go down when we went to them. Um, but that's what's terribly important for us to understand, is that we have internal and external customers. And there's a whole, and actually what we, and I gotta go off here a little bit because I'm gonna run out of time. We got started a little late, um, and I will not be late. <laughs> um, we got into problems yesterday with that, with not being open here long enough. Um, I don't have time to talk about what we call, you guys are all clients to us, okay? And because of this whole thing that I've talked about, we talk about the fact that the people, the other people we work with are customers. Our, our coworkers are customers. Our vendors are customers. Now, when we're talking to a vendor, we don't call him a customer, okay, because they're gonna get really confused if we say, you know, you're the customer, you know, but, but in our mind, you're our client, they're